Hello everyone, welcome to another video from JP Tech. In this video, we're going to talk about this thing right here on the screen, the Ryzen DRAM calculator. This is version 1.5.1, 1.6 I believe is coming out on the 29th of July. Uh, it should be pretty similar to this, but it'll have better support for Zen 2 processors and X570 motherboards from my understanding. But in this video, we're going to look at the Typhoon Burner and the DRAM calculator. I'm going to show you how to get the correct information you need into the DRAM calculator so that it can give you the information you need to manually enter the best subtimings for your memory and Ryzen processor. So tweaking the timings, the subtimings on memory with Ryzen has, it's not anything new to Zen 2. It was important on Zen, it's important on Zen Plus, and it's just as important, if not more important, on Zen 2. You can get by with pretty nice performance, actually, at 3200 MHz CL16 Hynix memory that you can get for very affordable prices these days. But if you want to really uncork the gaming potential, uh, more specifically, if you're a high refresh gamer and you know you want as much frame rate as you can get, you really need to look at 3600 CL14 as your memory configuration. In the video, I'm using some 3200 CL14 G-Skill BDI memory to achieve this, and I, I will link the information on that in the uh, description below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dig into these two tools and learn how we can extract the most performance out of our Ryzen CPU. All right, so you're gonna need two things. Well, actually you can use just the DRAM calculator if you're able to convert the values you need into nanoseconds. Really the easiest way to do this though is to go over to the softknology.business website. I'm gonna put this link in the description below. Uh, you wanna download this Typhoon Burner. Go to the download page and then you wanna download the freeware version. I already have it installed, so we're going to go ahead and open it right here. You may need to run this as administrator, and there might be a warning box. I've already opened this, but there should be a warning box, and you just hit more and go ahead and accept to run this program. Otherwise, it's not going to start up for you. We also want to go ahead and download the Ryzen DRAM calculator from wherever you choose to do it. I get mine from Tech Power Up usually or Guru 3D. Uh, the current version is 1.5.1, but probably by the time this video is up, on the 29th of July, I think they're releasing the 1.6 version. So that's going to be even more useful to Zen 2. It, uh, it's really going to be more ideal, but you can use 1.51. I've been using it. I look forward to 1.6, but in the meantime, this is what we have. So download that, uncompress it, and just leave it for now. So back to running the Typhoon Burner. We're gonna go ahead and pop this up here on the side. You're gonna hit read at the top and you're just gonna select one of these. These are your uh, RAM modules. You have some nice useful information about your memory here, but we need to go to the report button here at the top, scroll all the way down and hit show in nanoseconds. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and export Go complete HTML report. Just sit, let it save as the name of your memory. I'm not going to hit save because I've already done so. And that's pretty much all you have to do with the Typhoon tool. You can gather some different information about the type of memory modules you have if you don't already know it. That information is usually up here in these first two sections. We're gonna go ahead and minimize that for now though. And then we're gonna open up this Ryzen DRAM calculator. All right, so now that we exported the information from Typhoon, we don't have to worry about entering any of these values in nanoseconds. We can just go ahead and click import XMP. I have three different memory saves here because I've been messing around with some things, but we're gonna use the 3200 CL14 information. All right, so that's pulled into the program for us now. And then I select Ryzen plus gen, which would be Zen plus, um, set the motherboard. They put X570, but it's not fully supported in this version 1.6 should have support for it. 
Um, I'm using X470, so we're going to do B450 slash X470. Everything else is set for us. You you set this based on the speed you want to run your memory at, not at what the XMP profile is supposed to be. So 3600 is really where you want to be at. So set 3600 if it's not already. And then these profile versions, you want to start on V1. This is for better memory. I, I never really had much luck with debug. Um, version 2 is for lesser memory, but version 1 has worked good for me. If you don't have any success on safe or fast, you might consider switching to V2 and checking out safe and fast profiles for that. But now that I have everything else set accordingly, I am using Rise, or, uh, Samsung B-Die. If you're using the Hynix stuff, I believe it's the MFR. You can check in Typhoon though and see what you have if you're not sure. But for the sake of this, we are using Ryzen. Why do I keep wanting to say Ryzen, folks? Samsung B die modules. And now everything else is set. So we're going to go ahead and click Safe. So this is the Safe profile. And it's going to show us all the subtimings for 3600 Safe, which is actually still quite fast. And I got pretty good results on these. I haven't shared it with you guys yet but I'm actually using the fast profile and if you click that it'll update all your values as well and I'm having really good luck running fast on the 3200 with uh, with both the 3700X and the 3900X I'm not having any issues and if you look on your other pages you're gonna have some voltage information and some other things that you can change you'll want to take this information with you to the BIOS, especially some stuff on this power supply. I don't know why they didn't put a screenshot button on here, but what I like to do is hit screenshot here and hit screenshot here and save both of these as two different files and put them on my phone. Or you can you know, pull this up on a laptop or whatever other computer you have, but I just usually just pull them up on my phone screen. And, uh, and you'll also want to screenshot this side or take a picture of it with your phone or whatever. And... Uh, so that way you can change all this in the BIOS. And one thing that I I suggest doing is actually s screenshotting both the save, or excuse me, the safe and the fast profile, and maybe even some different speeds. Like maybe even you want to change this to 3200 and uh, run the safe and fast for that as well. But that way, if if you're not having any luck, you don't have to come all the way back into Windows and get more memory information to try again you can just try a different configuration because you already have the information you need and keep in mind some things may change on this second page and most things don't change on the power supply system page but you might want to check just in case you you even ventured over to the extreme timing which does one warn you that you want to use better cooling and uh, I really suggest that you will because I'm using the tridents the G-Skill tridents uh, RGB stuff and it gets pretty toasty when you're using the fast profile. I would definitely consider getting some extra airflow on your memory but it uh, I'm not having any issues running at 1.46 volts and uh, you'll see what I'm running at exactly when we go to the BIOS section. So now that we have all the information we need from the DRAM calculator we save screenshots we have some means to look at this information when we go to the BIOS let's go ahead and go over to the BIOS and enter those values. Alright guys, now that we have everything figured out in the DRAM calculator, we have some speeds we want to try. Um, we're going to go ahead and enter that into the BIOS. Another thing that I forgot to mention that is a good idea as well is you might want to try to gather some different screenshots of like save profile, fast profile, and different speeds for your memory because you might not find stability on your first try and you might have to change some things or you might even just have to try a different profile through the DRAM calculator to see what is achievable on your particular system with your particular memory. But to enter these results we're going to enter our BIOS. In this case we're using an ASUS X470 Hero Wi-Fi. This is the Crosshair 7. You should have a very similar looking BIOS with the X570 but I'm, I'm not sure of the exact differences. One thing you'll want to do though is set your AI overclock tuner to manual. And actually, first off, let me mention, if you have anything configured at the moment, maybe go ahead and go to user profiles and save the profile that you're on. And then you'll want to load optimized defaults. 
once you've done that, then come over to the AI overclock tuner, put it on manual. You can put these um, base clock frequency and dividers uh, manually if you want, but I'm leaving them all on auto. I've had no issues doing that. I'm leaving the core ratio on auto because I am uh, testing the processor stock with just the memory configuration. So you can change those things as you see fit. For this example, we're using the 3600. So we're going to set 3600. F clock is your fabric clock. Set that to 1800. You can leave these other things auto if you choose, or you can manually configure them as you so choose. So we're going to go to the DRAM timing control. And uh, we're going to start entering those values. For the most part, the DRAM calculator is in the order that it needs to be. I will note that the uh, write delay and read delay are out of order compared to the DRAM calculator. So make sure that you're not swapping these two incorrectly. The uh, TRCWR is gonna go here and then the, uh, the RD is gonna go here. So make sure you're not swapping these or you might have issues with what you're going to achieve subtiming wise. So other than these two, I believe you can just follow the list in order and enter each one of these values. All these should be auto by default. Make sure you're not using the XMP profile and you're doing the actual manual overclock. And you're just gonna go down this list and enter each of these manually. The only thing that should be on auto from my experience with this is I believe the TRC page, uh, let's see, TRFC4, because they only gave us two in the DRAM calculator. And so these are all given on the right side of the screen in the DRAM calculator. You'll want to enter these values as well your CMD2T is your command rate. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. You're just matching up boxes in the DRAM calculator with boxes in your BIOS. Okay, and these are the other three auto things that you'll just leave on auto that you won't change. So all of these values are off of that first page that you saved from the DRAM calculator. Now once you've entered all those values, you're going to use the um, power management page. I actually didn't screenshot that. So you'll want to save the power supply system page as well. And like I said, for that one, I didn't use any of the CPU uh, settings because I'm I'm using auto for now because of the testing that I'm doing I did come down here though and set some things manual so I did set for, for everything like RAM related and so on I use the recommended settings so load like calibration uh, 3 slash 6 current capability 120 you'll want to set the the VDD sock switching to, to uh, manual and then you'll get the option to set the frequency optimize phase control 100% current capability for the memory extreme on the phase control again DRAM switching is on manual this allows us to manually set the frequency that the DRAM calculator suggests. And then this is also right here at the bottom. This is where you find your boot voltage for your memory. You're going to want to, I set mine the same as what I have it running at right now. Um, soon I'm going to be looking to dial back these voltages and uh, see what kind of stability I can get. But right now I'm getting 100% stability. I'm not um, having any failures uh, on the memory tests. So I'm happy with that. Like I say, the 1.6 version comes out, I believe, on the 29th. So we probably should have better voltages for Zen 2 and uh, might be able to get better timings out of it as well. 
we'll just have to see when that comes out. I look forward to trying that out as well. But in the time being, this 1.5.1 version has worked no problem for me. All right, so that's your, excuse me, that's your uh, Digi power control, your VRM power delivery stuff. So now we're gonna come down and set VDD sock. I've set mine to 1.08. According to the DRAM calculator for this speed, you can set it up to 1.1 something volts but this is working fine for me i can actually go a little bit lower and i will be curious to see if the uh, suggested values change in the new dram calculator you'll want to set this dram voltage to whatever is recommended if you're not getting stability you might want to look at running the max that it suggests if it's not booting or you're not getting uh, stability you can try more voltage i really don't want to go too much more voltage than this Personally, without some additional cooling on the memory, which I'm currently looking into because memory tweaking is so important to the performance of this of these processors. All right, so after we set that, I manually set the PLL voltage, and that should be it on here. Yeah, I don't believe there's anything else to configure. So what I like to do is say again go to the user profile save a profile for this and then uh, once you've saved a profile go ahead and save changes and reset if it doesn't boot you're gonna have to uh, reset your CMOS depending on your board I have switches on the back and I can just reset the CMOS that way do whatever you have to do to recover your BIOS if um, if it's not posting and then when you go back in load load the uh, profile and then just make changes from there is the easiest way to go since a lot of these values you're hand entering and uh, it just gets kind of tedious if you have to keep re-entering them so I like to try I like to um, every memory profile I try I save a user profile in the BIOS so that way I can go back to those and make tweaks as necessary but that's really all there is to it you this is all going to vary by motherboard and CPU and memory, but it's really looking like you shouldn't have much issue running 3600 speed with Ryzen. It's really going to come down to potentially your board, but I really don't even think so, especially if you're running an X570. Even with this X470, I had no problems running 3600 on my 3700X and 3900X, and this was with the, uh, the tight CL14 timings that we actually have right here. This is all of them. CPU runs like a champ like this. I really, I, I can't recommend enough. If you're a high refresh gamer, you this is where you want to be. 3600 memory, CL14. You want the fabric at the same speed, 1800, and uh, it, it just games so well at this setting. So, and, and really, this is something you wanted to do with any generation Horizon. Uh, it just happens to be that Zen 2, it, more of the Zen 2 processors work with these crazier speeds like on my 2700x and my previous 1700 and even a 2600 i had none of those processors would i have ever been able to get 3600 cl14 and i tried and tried and tried tried different motherboards and it just wasn't happening on my 2700x i, I literally could only go like 3200 megahertz with like the save for the fast profile and it really only takes you so far some people were fortunate enough to get good IMCs on their processors because the memory controller is on the processor. So, you know, if you were lucky and you had the right combination, then, you know, you might have got better memory overclocking results than I did on my previous Ryzen processors. But you really want to get familiar with the Ryzen DRAM calculator on any version of Ryzen to include Zen 2. I hope I answered a lot of the questions for you guys to help, help figure out how to get the values you needed from the DRAM calculator and how to enter them on the ASUS BIOS. If you guys have any comments or suggestions for me, please throw those in the comments below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more from JP Tech in the future, hit subscribe. And until the next video, guys, I'll see you around.